So uh, I'm going to speak about testing uh, methods, testing material properties, and with a special focus on uh, non-destructive testing methods. And this presentation uh, was made uh, on the basis of knowledge that we had at the time of uh, uh, the development of the guideline, UIC guideline, and it was 10 years ago at least. And uh, 10 years has passed since then. So it uh, doesn't in uh, include uh, the latest developments in this field, the new structural health monitoring uh, devices and solutions, not to speak about the smart uh, devices and smart technologies. I think, we, I think this will be focus on the uh, focus of the uh, later presentations or hopefully a focus of a later project of UIC if <laughs> it's supported. So I, I, would, I would like to speak about mainly conventional testing methods and not the latest ones. Just a short overview on the available testing methods. We can categorize testing methods uh, according to the way of uh, uh, the principles of uh, uh, their use, their, their uh, principle, uh, how destructive they are for the structures. So we, can, uh, we have destructive methods, we have semi-destructive methods or slightly destructive methods. I don't want to go into, in, into details. Here, uh, there are non-destructive methods and there are monitoring methods that are a little bit more than uh, simple test methods because it requires uh, uh, testing for a longer period or periodically on the structure. So I would like to give you an overview on these test methods and uh, what can be used these methods for and um, only I would, uh, I would like to give uh, specific information, a little bit more detailed information on, on some selected methods, but not, not on the whole. Um, about destructive versus NDT methods, what is the difference between these two test methods? Uh, destructive methods give mainly uh, quantitative results on me mechanical parameters or structures. We can uh, make the test on prism or court samples, while uh, NDT methods give mainly qualitative results. Not so accurate regarding the strength parameters, for example, but give an overall, overall qualitative uh, result on the structure. Uh, destructive tests can give direct information that local to the position of the samples taken. So in the very localized information, <laughs> while we expect from NDT methods to give uh, information on the condition of the whole structure, global information. Maybe it's not the best example, but it's not a local test, but you think that uh, endoscopy can give an information on the uh, condition of the arch, the whole arch, and, and what is behind the arch also. We can, we can also call it a global information, not only a local information, like a surface me measurement. Um, in destructive tests, the number of uh, samples should be minimized. So you don't want to be so destructive for the structure. And uh, it, while in the NDT test, there is no limit in the number of samples or test areas. If we can pay the expert, then there's no limit, but we don't have to <laughs> limit our uh, test numbers. About destructive tests, there are so many ways of uh, testing uh, mechanical properties of masonry. This is the UIC recommendation, which is uh, considered to be the most accurate way because it gives, gives uh, uh, composite strength that contains, the specimen contains not only the, the bricks, the, the, the units, but also the mortar. So we will get the composite masonry strength with the test. But there are so many uncertainties also in these uh, test methods. It's not quite clear how, how the, the stress is distributed in the sample. So there's some uh, inaccuracy. We can calculate the uh, strength of masonry using this very simple equation and there is a correction factor between 0.8 and, and 2.2. So that, that refers to the accuracy of the test. And on the second hand, we, we, we can't, can't use it too much. We have to limit the number of, uh, of uh, specimens, of course. The Curtis value can be calculated from the mean value or the average value of the tested results. If you know the standard deviation and if you have enough number of specimens, enough number of tests. We also need to have the number of specimens. There is a table 
that gives a K factor that uh, is based on uh, a number of uh, specimens used in, in the test. Um, we more often use tests on a small diameter cord sam samples. They are considered a little bit less accurate than the large diameter cores, but, but they're not so destructive. And, and, but we can take a little bit more number of samples from the structure. And it's not only the strengths can be analyzed, but also the condition of the structure, because we can, we, we can have an, a much larger overview, wider overview in the structural condition. Here, we carry out tests individually on the units and individually on the mortar, and the masonry strength can be calculated according to the formula that you can find also in Euro codes. Only the, K, the K, constant K uh, should be estimated, but it's, we, can, we can take it as, as 0.5 if we don't have more accurate, more accurate uh, approach to that. So this is the, the, the punch test that we recommend uh, to be carried out on mortar, a piece of mortar, which very easily can be taken uh, out from the structure, while, while standardized mortar uh, test is not, not possible because we don't have the ability to get that uh, standardized specimen. How many samples to be taken from the structure is a good question. Uh, the required number should take account of the required accuracy of the strength parameters. And there is a question. How accurately do we need the strength parameter? Because as uh, Bill already referred to that, the, the behavior of arches, the capacity of arches, uh, is basically depends on, the, most depends on the geometry and not on the strength of the material. And secondly, uh, we also need the reliability of other parameters used in assessment. If other parameters are, are uh, uncertain, why do we have to focus on uh, getting a certain information on one, one uh, specific parameter? It's not, not, not <laughs> so important in this case. So we have a suggested number. It's between three and, five, uh, three and six uh, for strength properties for level two assessment for a uh, medium level. And we, uh, we can use higher number of samples for, for higher level assessment, but I, I doubt it doubt it now, so I'm not quite convinced that we ever have, <laughs> ever need that amount of samples for a normal bridge. Um, and I will explain why. So it's a sensitivity, sensitivity analysis that we carried out on a very simple arch structure using the, the ring uh, analysis software. But using a stochastic uh, analysis on a probabilistic basis, we treated the input parameters as random, uh, random parameters and we calculated how, uh, how sensitive the variation of the ultimate load on, on the variation in the input parameters. And we found that, for example, crushing strength of masonry is not a determining parameter, not so important. The sensitivity factor is very, very low. Uh, instead, arch thickness, effective width, rise, geometry of arch is much more important. But it's only a, a typical simple arch. If uh, the strength is very low, uh, then the strength is getting more important. But for a normal structure, a normal strength, uh, masonry, this is the case. And it's only for ultimate. If you speak about permissible load and, and serviceability, uh, these parameters are the importance uh, in pertences are different, different. Other uh, test methods, now semi-destructive test methods, which are a little bit less destructive than uh, the <laughs> destructive. Uh, first, I would like to refer to the flat jack. When we cut a slot in the masonry, we measure the formation induced by the, the slot. And after that, we uh, insert a flat jack, we increase the pressure, and we wait until the original position is reached by the uh, extensometers. And the, we can measure the stress rate in masonry, uh, which is a function of the pressure and the uh, other parameters, experimental parameters that can be calibrated. We can, we can uh, measure the stress rate, or a, in the case of a double jack system, the compressive strength or even elastic modulus, but a little bit uh, uncertain. 
a little bit more accurate way of uh, testing elastic parameters and then and the strength of masonry is the modified flat jack, which was developed by a German colleague. And we had a paper in 2009 on this, uh, on this method. Uh, but it's, it's much more destructive. As you can see, we have to remove some part of masonry, so it's not, not always recommended. Um, further on, about uh, semi-destructive test methods, um, I would like to mention boroscopy or endoscopy uh, that are some of the most effective tools for uh, analyzing masonry, testing masonry structures. When a small camera is inserted in boreholes, <coughs> drilled in the structure, and uh, a detailed study of the surface is allowed. And not only the investigation, but also drilling. It's, uh, it's myself, I'm drilling a masonry structure. And I, I would like to say that it's one of the most important information because drilling resistance gives you really <laughs> reliable information on the condition. If something changes during the drilling, it, it refers to change in condition. So I think drilling resistance is a very, very good uh, way of uh, measuring the variation of uh, strength of masonry. And if you, you can measure the torque, accurately, it, it can give even, even uh, more accurate uh, results. The test can be used for uh, detection of large cavities, cracks, and qualitative information on, on, on amazing recondition. And also, uh, can be used for calibration of other test methods like radar methods. It's very important because other test methods can be uh, uncertain at some points, and if you combine the test methods, we can get accurate information only by the combination. But there are limitations. It gives only uh, local information and it's slightly destructive. About NDT methods, is a third group of test methods, the pendulum hammer that uh, can give only a qualitative approximate value uh, for the strength. Uh, we can get results on the masonry units and the strength uh, result on strength of masonry joints. And there is a, a different head um, for the equipment, but I, I, I would like to refer to the fact that it's only very, very ap approximate. And it's only qualit qualitative uh, uh, results can be obtained. And there are other reasons for using uh, non-destructive uh, test methods, not only uh, to define uh, the mechanical properties of masonry. There can be hidden dimensions in masonry, and Bill also referred, that, uh, referred to that also, that is hidden, hidden parameters, hidden dimensions, hidden features can affect the structural behavior very much. So they are very important. For example, thickness, variation of uh, the thickness of the arch. For example, the condition of, of the fill material or what is behind the arch. Uh, not only Adolf Hitler can, can make uh, gross sections to analyze, but we, we have the flood in Hungary. <laughs> so it, this cross section was prepared by the flood, and not, not the Soviet troops. <laughs> and, but it's also very dangerous. So, uh, so it's really important. Um, this element can modify the, the, the effective uh, span of the arch and can, can, and can uh, modify even the, the, working, uh, the working shape of the arch. So the semicircular arch can turn into a segmental arch. And that's why, that's why it's so important to know what is behind the structure. And and it can help in investigating variations in the type of materials and condition of materials. For example, in this example, the condition of the stonework varies throughout the arch thickness. So it is a good condition, a bad condition. So we cannot rely on that in, in, in carrying the load, only the, the outer part. Or in many cases, we don't have information on what is behind the structure, what is behind, what is in the, in the fill material. Okay, or what are the, what layers do we have in the fill? So 
So they are all unknown but important uh, parameters we have to take into account in, in an assessment. Arches have damages, as uh, Jose uh, mentioned in previous presentation, that can affect the arch behavior, what we have to know about. Not all damages can be seen from, from the surface of the arch. Many of them are hidden. And there can be free, previous intervention that we not always have uh, information about the previous intervention. For example, delaminated shotcrete layer. <laughs> What is the thickness of that? So sometimes we don't have enough information on, on previous intervention. Uh, about, uh, among the non-destructive test methods, I would like to mention, mention first GPR, ground penetrating radar, where electromagnetic impulses are transmitted into the material and recorded by a receiver. And um, reflections at uh, layers, different layers, are recorded and analyzed by a computer later. If there is a change in a dielectric constant, uh, there will be a reflection. So it can refer to variation of materials, voids inside the structure, cracks. It's a quite effective way, but it's very difficult to interpret the, the results. So just a small explanation how it works. We have an antenna and the radar wave is transmitted to an object, if it's a point object, we'll have a hyperbola, or if it's a layer, a linear object, we'll have a line in the radiogram. The penetration depth will depend on the frequency of the antenna, but the higher frequency antenna will have lower penetration but higher resolution, while uh, lower frequency antenna will provide higher penetration but lower as a, uh, lower resolution. So uh, it's better to combine the two and to use a device that contains both antennas at the same time. So some, some images I would like to show. It's a radiogram uh, where is a depth distance scale and uh, there's a change in the condition of, of uh, material. So the con uh, condition uh, will change. Uh, good quality will turn into uh, bad quality material, or we can, we can uh, represent data on, an, on an anomaly map using depth slices. It means it's a planned view, but uh, we use a slice in a certain depth in the masonry, and different colors refer, refer to different uh, uh, um, amplitudes of a signal, and um, some anomal anomalies can be found with this technique. For example, there is suspected to be a, um, a void in the, in the masonry, and this blue color can refer to the presence of uh, wetness in the masonry. But it's still not enough because uh, there are so many unknown uh, features in the radiogram that cannot be explained. We need to, be, need to know a little bit more. For example, uh, there is a, a backing in the arch, but what is the material? We have no information. How can we find it out? The best is to combine it with other test methods, for example, with uh, endoscopy. And this is a, a test carried out on a jack arch when the presence of um, steel beams can be clearly seen on the radiogram and layers above the arch, but we have no information. What is it? So if we combine with endoscopy, we will have a better view on the uh, condition on, and condition of the materials. And a uh, short case study that uh, was made, uh, carried out in Budapest. You, you may recognize this bridge. It's a chain bridge on the background. And there is the building is the Hungarian Academ uh, Academy of Sciences. And there's a railway track and road. And there is a supposed arch bridge or arch tunnel just uh, under, under the road surface. Uh, but there's a problem, there's no access to this, uh, to this arch. And there's not only one, there are several arches in this area, and the operator, the, <laughs> the managers don't even know about uh, the number of arches. And there is no access, because there's walls on both sides, and there are structural problems. There were displacements on the road surface and on the, on the tram, uh, track surface, and we were asked to investigate the arch and make an assessment but without watching the arch. 
<laughs> without, without uh, a physical investigation. And um, we managed to find the original drawings, uh, which was drawings of similar structures, but not exactly the same structure. So we didn't know, we had no information whether these drawings are accurate or not for this particular structure. And the um, solution was we carried out um, NDT test using GeoRadar and endoscopy. Very simple, it could be done in one day only. And it didn't have to stop the traffic. The endoscopy sur survey was very carried out uh, among parking cars. So um, we managed to find all the arches, which is not, not only one, but we find seven arches below. <laughs> and we had got information on the condition with the endoscopy, the layers and the materials, also what is inside. And the problem was that uh, it was filled up with a gravel material and uh, then you washed away this material during the floods and that's why, that's why it, it, it is not, it's empty now, so it's not filled up with the material. And that was the, the, the cause of the problem. So based on this uh, information, these two tests, we made an assessment we could uh, make a geometrical representation of the arch, but you can see in the radiogram we didn't see the backing. That is important. It affects the assessed capacity. So the backing was not as clear on the, on the radiogram, so we couldn't uh, take it into account in the, in the calculations. But all others, the thickness of the arch, materials, uh, even the type of the stone could be analyzed by endoscopy. Other uh, NDT methods that is um, widely used on the masonry structure is sonic method where uh, sonic waves are, tra are transmitted through the structure and the velocity of the waves is proportional to the properties of the material. And uh, it can be represented in a depth, in a depth uh, um, velocity uh, plot. And um, in this short case study, I want to show you a test on a Danube bridge pier. It's not a masonry arch, it's only the, the pier is, is masonry. And uh, the two tests were carried out on the higher level and the lower level. And you can see um, a velocity map. The blue colors refer to lower velocity of the waves and it referred to a bad quality material, unfilled masonry, unfilled material, while in the upper level there is higher density, higher quality material, and this information was very helpful for developing a, a repair solution, which was injection. So we, we could uh, um, calculate more or less the required um, injection material. And um, it's very effective monitoring uh, methods, but I don't want to spend time on it because it will be presented by Adrian after me. Fortunately, she is expert in that, but it's, uh, it's very effective in, uh, in, uh, in uh, monitoring the evolution of cracks and the uh, deterioration process in arches. A few, a few words about infratermography. Um, it's based on the principle that the physical properties of uh, masonry uh, surface will affect the temperature, surface temperatures. And uh, to also affect uh, the physical property, I mean the thermal conductivity, the density of the material, and uh, thermal resistivity is, uh, will affect the, the, uh, the thermal image and the propagation of thermal, thermal uh, uh, waves. And in this, in this test, the thermal radiation from the surface is collected by an infrared camera. And the radiation pattern is converted into a visual image. And this uh, test methods can be used for, for example, detect anomalies that is close to the surface, like delamination, cracks, uh, presence of wetness. It can be represented in a, a 2D thermal image or in a 3D thermal image. But uh, in most cases, 2D image is enough for, for our analysis. Just a few more examples. It's a delamin delaminated surface, or here, wet regions in an arch is represented, can be clearly seen as, as uh, blue strips 
on, on, the, on the thermal image. Um, this can give only an, an overview on the distribution of, of uh, the presence of, presence of wetness, but it doesn't give accurate information, and we can combine it with, with point tests using this very simple resistivity uh, testing. And it was referred already and mentioned already that the geometry of arch is very important for the behavior. And uh, it was the technique that we used 20 years ago, the homemade uh, device, it's a, a Hilti uh, laser uh, pointer attached to a computer and we could uh, measure the profile of an arch with the required accuracy. It was enough at that time, but today uh, we can use um, a 3D scanning, a laser, a laser profiling. And I think it's quite quite useful method for analyzing art. Although Bill referred to that uh, not always um, enough. So photogra photogrammetry can give some, some more. But uh, if we do it well, in proper way, it can give very, very uh, valuable information on the arch. And we can use further use for its structural analysis. This is not an arch bridge, it's but a historical building in, in, in Hungary. But um, the same technique can be used for arch bridges as well. But you need time on site, of course. And you need to uh, have enough uh, number of uh, points in the cloud points. Okay, another interesting uh, testing methods that are non-destructive is the uh, so uh, the condition of uh, foundations and depth of foundations are very often very important for our uh, assessment, and uh, not all you uh, don't have don't always have uh, accurate information on that, and uh, conventional techniques like excavations not not always feasible. Not possible, and in this case, um, there are two. Uh, there are non-destructive options. For example, the borehole radar method and um, the parallel seismic method. When we drill a borehole uh, beside the arch and we lower down a radar device or a, or geophones, and here a radar impulse is used for for making the waves and uh, using for the analysis of the surrounding soil, and in the second case, uh, hammer impact is used to generate a signal uh, for the analysis. Um, we need only a very, very um, small, maybe five, 10 centimeters diameter hole to be drilled. And um, we, <laughs> this is a bridge in, in Hungary, and uh, Cracks appeared in this abutment, and uh, we were looking for the reasons of the cracks. And we find original plan and the reconstruction plan. And we thought of foundation problems, but uh, the two, two plans were not uh, the same. <laughs> and uh, we didn't know which is true. The reconstruction plan, which was based on a test that was carried out 30 years ago, or the original. So we didn't want to make excavations and uh, carried out uh, the test with uh, using, using borehole radar and parallel seismic and find out, I don't want to go into the details in this, in this uh, uh, um, diagram, but this is the change in the signal we refer to the uh, foundation tip. So this is the, the, the depth of the foundation and it, it means that the original plan was right, not, not the reconstruction plan. And the other problem, that here is the, the hard rock layer and not here. So that's the other problem. We measured in, in not only one point, one borehole, but another, we used other boreholes. And both, we, there was a distance between the foundation and, and the hard rock layer. And that can be the problem. I already referred to the benefit of combination of test methods and, and some important <laughs> points. We can use combination of test methods to compare results, confirm measurements and the recorded variations or comparison of the results are used to improve the interpre interpretation of the results. And third possibility is to use a quick technique which is relatively cheap 
to make a rough first mapping on a condition and uh, it can be followed by a slow technique um, on selected areas. And I think this is the way how we can do testing uh, of arches. The first, we don't have to use the most expensive, more, uh, most complicated, sophisticated techniques. We try, try to make the first review, the first uh, mapping with a cheap but, but, uh, but um, reliable method. Uh, we gave recommendations in our uh, UIC leaflet on, on the use of the, test, the testing methods. And here is only, only one, one uh, table fr from this guide. And we categorized our test methods according to uh, their efficiency uh, for using certain problems. Uh, for example, as application as routine tests, supplementary tests, or used in special cases. And these, these are only recommendations and evaluation based on our, our uh, knowledge that was uh, 10 years ago. So maybe I would make this table a little bit differently today, but uh, if we have a chance in the future to, uh, to work on that, I think this, uh, this table should be extended. The conclusions from my presentation. So um, hopefully I managed to prove that uh, non-destructive testing can, can help assessment of harsh bridges and can provide information on geometry, structural, anom structural anomalies. Uh, it can give overview on condition and in, in, in some situations also on some material parameters. It can increase confidence in input, input parameters for a uh, structural model. So very important but we still have limitations because there's a strong reliance on specialists and unfortunately, correlation with mechanical parameters is still limited. Therefore, a combination of uh, test methods is recommended. And at last is that the uh, NDT can complement destructive tests but not replace uh, today. But uh, first, we have to make a sensitivity analysis on the parameters and define the test program accordingly. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.